uh, I woke up this morning without a voice, <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Uh, I've had a cold for a week. Um, uh, I hope whoever is coming after me is, uh, is not going to be too upset with the microphone. Uh, so I'm going to talk about Hawk, which is the uh, web interface that we made for the HA stack in, um, in OpenSUSE and also SUSE. So it's all developed on OpenSUSE, and I'm going to demo on OpenSUSE. So uh, this is all stuff that you can use um, in Tumbleweed and Leap uh, today. Um, so yeah. Oh, let's see. Did I... All right. OK. So. Uh, first of all, if you want to download this presentation, or I, I've made this kind of OpenSUSE style uh, reveal.js presentation uh, theme uh, because uh, I didn't like the, the existing one. Uh, if you want to follow along or, or want the slides, you can get them at this URL. Um, I'll, I'll make a PDF uh, if you want that later as well. So, uh, first of all, uh, high availability is um, kind of, to, to sum it up briefly, it's uh, uh, managing services in a cluster environment, uh, making sure that services are available regardless of uh, software or hardware failures. So servers can um, fail or software can crash uh, and the high availability stack will m try to make sure to keep uh, everything up and running. Uh, I should. Yeah. Okay. So that's like the brief intro to HA in general. Uh, you can use it for uh, basically anything. Um, you can use it. So it's commonly used for keeping web servers online, but also databases, uh, mail servers, NFS servers. Um, Managing virtual machines, containers, pretty much anything. Um, and uh, yeah, using the HA stack is really easy on OpenSUSE. Uh, all of our stuff is already in Tumbleweed and Leap, um, so you can install it um, uh, really easily. Uh, and the, the thing I'm going to show today is uh, Hawk, which is yeah, the web interface for managing HA. Uh, that's included on OpenSUSE. Uh, so if you want to install on a machine, it's, it's really easy. Um, you just super install HA cluster bootstrap and then run HA cluster in it. You have a one node cluster. Uh, adding more nodes is as simple as installing the package on those and running HA cluster join. Um, you can also, so I'm experimenting with a Docker container for Hawk. So if you're not running OpenSUSE, you're running some other operating system and you want to try it out, uh, you can uh, get the Docker container that has a whole uh, cluster stack included um, with the Hawk interface. Uh, I haven't tried it too much. I, I don't know if it actually works for managing services on, on Windows or, <laughs> or Red Hat or what have you, but... Uh, um, as, as far as I know, it, it should at least give you the interface so you can look at it. Uh, there's also an um, introduction guide for setting up uh, a cluster with Hawk at this URL. So if, you, if you're interested and want to try it out, that's, that's uh, a good place to go. Uh, yes, so, okay, let's demo. So on this machine, I have three virtual machines running, a cluster running. Um, and what you do is, uh, after installing, the uh, Hawk interface will be running on port 7630, as you can see at the top. And you will go to that URL. Also, as you can see, uh, by default, when you install, it presents a self-signed certificate um, this is something that if you're using it you know, uh, for a bigger installation and so on, you can install your own certificate so you get 
uh, the nice little green check mark. Uh, if you if you just installing and setting up, you're gonna get a warning saying, "Oh, this is self signed certificate. Do you really want to continue?" You say yes, and uh, uh, the browser is unhappy, but it, it will let you. Uh, I've I've been thinking of maybe using Let's Encrypt in some way to automatically create a valid certificate when you install, but uh, I haven't gotten that working yet. And it's uh, so Let's Encrypt is really nice, but it's also kind of focused on setting up for Apache at the moment, and using it in general is is not that easy. So we'll see, but uh, in the future maybe. Uh, so when you have it up. Um, by default, it creates a user called HA cluster, and the password is just Linux. Uh, you obviously you want to change that if you're actually going to uh, use this in, in the wild, but uh, uh, that's the default. And then you log in and you get the, uh, the interface for Hawk. And uh, I know Thomas has also worked on it, and it looks, it looks a bit different from when he last saw it, I think. Um, I've been changing it. So this is the uh, development version, which is going to be released as 2.1 uh, any day now. Uh, it's it's uh, pretty much stable, I hope. Uh, we'll see how the demo goes. Uh, but um, basically what you can see is um, I have a bunch of resources running. So a resource is a service running in the cluster. And I have three nodes. So we have the... Um, Web UI node, the node one and node two. So these are, this is the entire high availability cluster at the moment. Um, so to demo today, I uh, set up. Uh, let's uh, show this one. So I've set up a simple image server uh, kind of program, just to show that really you can manage kind of anything as uh, a cluster resource. So it doesn't have to be a, a web server or a file system or any of the prepackaged like resource agents that we include. Uh, using those are obviously better if you can, but you can actually use it for, to manage all kinds of things. And so one of the agents that we have is the uh, anything agent, which basically just runs um, a command um, so we can look at the configuration for for the uh, the image server. So all it's doing is it's running the image serve command, which I've installed on all the cluster nodes, um, and it's passing the folder that it's supposed to look at for serving images from as a parameter. Um, and basically, that's it. Uh, if you have a program that it implements the server or implements the software, and it's long running, so it just keeps running. Um, the uh, this will monitor that it's still running, uh, start it, uh, restart it if it crashes, restart it on another node if that node goes down, and so on. Uh, so, so to demonstrate this, uh, I will show uh, first of all, kind of. So I threw together this uh, script. So this is really simple. It's a Python image server uh, that I wrote yesterday <laughs> that just serves uh, images from a shared folder um, using OCFS2 uh, that's available from all of the cluster nodes. Uh, so we have an... Oh, I always do that. So what I have is um, HA proxy running on on uh, one of the nodes, also managed by the cluster. So if the node running HA proxy goes down, it will restart on another node, and that is uh, fronting this image server running on on some of the nodes. And uh, by doing this, I can have a single entry point. Um, and handle uh, SSL and so on using HA proxy, and then access the image server uh, through that. Um, so just this demo. So what I'm going to show now is that uh, you can see that this is currently serving images from node one, 
Um, and I can uh, upload an image uh, like this. And the image is showing there. I can then go into Hawk and um, turn off node one, uh, just as a demo. And the image server will restart on another node and be serving images from there. Uh, so we'll see if it works. So we set that node to standby. Uh, you can see the image server is now running on node two. Um, so you can see that there. And if we go into HAProxy, it's not say, now saying that the second one is the one that's serving. And if we go back to this and reload, now it's serving from node two, and it still has the images that I uploaded. So I can then upload a different image and show, yeah, it still has those images. And I can bring this node back from standby. And uh, so right now it's still running on node two because there's no reason to switch back. But if I want, I can force it to go back to node one uh, by choosing to migrate to node one. And it's now running on node one. I go back and yeah, I'm getting the images from node one. And in the background, this is now uh, restarted the software running on another node. Um, so I can show a little bit more about how to set that up. So in the uh, configuration, so the configuration is actually stored as XML in the cluster software. Uh, but really, you never really had to look at the XML configuration. Um, so we have a few different ways to, to view uh, the state of the cluster and the state of the configuration that are much nicer than looking at the XML directly. And uh, let's see how I'm doing for time. Oh, I have plenty. So uh, you have a text-based format that's the same as you have on the command line tools that we have for managing the cluster. Uh, so you can see all my resources and nodes are defined here. Um, we have the resource for the anything um, uh, service. It's simply running this binary with this argument, uh, monitoring every 10 seconds to see that it's still running. If for some reason it crashes, it will be restarted. Uh, if it crashes, it crashes repeatedly on a particular node, it will be restarted on a different node. Uh, all of this is managed automatically using the, uh, the configuration. Um, so you can also see in the form of uh, a listing, here's all the resources that we've defined. Uh, we also have the constraints defined between resources. Uh, so we can go in and see that I've said that um, wherever the uh, image server is going to run, we also need to have the uh, cluster file system running so that it can find the files. And the way that's done is by defining a constraint uh, between these two. So it's just saying that it has to have uh, the cluster FS resource running before it's uh, uh, together with the image server. And we also need to find that the cluster file system needs to be mounted before we start the image server. And that's done using an order constraint, um, which is defined uh, in a very similar way. So we have the um, uh, cluster FS first, and then start the image server. And if I only had the order constraint, uh, the cluster would be free to start the image server on one node and the cluster file system on another node. So it's just an ordering constraint. It's not a placement constraint. So we needed to, uh, and, ha and se separating these two constraints makes it very flexible. So you can have, let's say you have, um, a web server that needs a database, but the database can be running on any node in the cluster, and the web server just accesses it through uh, an IP address. Um, you can set that up so that the database has to be running for the web server to be up, 
uh, but they can run on different nodes. Um, and uh, the cluster is free to load balance and place them as, as it sees fit. So uh, this way, it's really easy to set up a cluster where you have multiple nodes, uh, but you don't have nodes that are just running idle. If you're, you can use the resources of all the nodes uh, when you have them, and then just fall back to a fewer set of nodes in an emergency, like when a, when the machine goes down. Uh, you can also see the uh, dashboard no view. Um, if I had two screens, I could show you side by side. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, so you can see resources moving between nodes in real time. Uh, so we have um, uh, the cluster status on the command line. And then I can then okay, say, uh, OK, let's uh, unmigrate that. I think it's still going to stay. Yeah, it's still staying on node 1. But I can move it then to node 2. So we migrate and we serve to node 2. And yeah, you can see the web interface updates instantly and shows that now it's running on Node 2. Um, so that's quite nice. Uh, you can also add multiple clusters. So if you have a bunch of clusters that you're managing, you can add them all to the same dashboard and put that up on the, on the screen. And you get, um, get them all in the same interface. So. I guess another kind of cool thing that we have that I think a lot of, a lot of these uh, demos and technologies kind of skip over, which is what do you do when things go wrong? So what if when, I, uh, when, when there is a failure and I want to figure out, well, what actually happened? Uh, what do I do? Uh, so uh, for a lot of times, that means just go, having to go into the machines and digging around and looking at the log files and trying to figure it out. But in Hawk, we actually have a tool which will do all that for you and try to figure out um, what happened and display just the basic information that you need to figure everything out. So uh, what I can do is I can look at the history of this cluster for a certain time period and then see what actually happened during that time. So if we then go in and look at, so I think this is the last hour, um, and see what's happened during that hour. Uh, what it's now doing is it going in in the background to each cluster node, fetch, fetching all the logs and information for the last hour, and then analyzing that to see um, what actually happened. So in this case, uh, as you can see, we have nine transitions, which means there were nine kind of events in the cluster during the time span. Uh, I can scroll around in the time and see when these events occurred. So I'm guessing this is when I started these uh, virtual machines and set up this cluster. Uh, so we can go in and see at this point, yeah, at this point, only one machine was online. Um, the other two were offline. Um, if we go to the next event, we have two nodes online, one node still offline, and then finally all three nodes are online and it's starting the services on all the machines. So here you can also see the, um, the decision that the cluster is making at that point. So you can see what it's going to do, it's going to move um, one web server instance from web UI to node two. Uh, it's going to restart the f another instance. Um, not exactly sure why, but I'm, I'm sure it knows why. Uh, and then it's going to start resources, start starting up resources on node two. Um, and there's all, all of these decisions then trigger actions on the nodes. And you can see the actions that it's triggering. So it's actually then monitoring all the resources, making sure that they're not running on nodes where they're not supposed to be running, making sure that they are running on nodes where they are supposed to be running, and then um, taking care to react to the answers it gets back to start and stop resources as needed. Um, and you also get log output, um, 
and all this stuff. Uh, you can also see, so you get, uh, <laughs> this can be a little bit difficult to interpret, but uh, it's basically a graph view showing the way the actions are going to happen in the cluster. So because it can do a bunch of things in parallel on different nodes, it figures out you know, what needs to happen in sequence and then tries to parallelize as much as possible. So basically when we have, so here we have a base clone resource, which is the, uh, the cluster file system uh, lock manager. Once that's started, we can start doing a bunch of other things in parallel. So we, at the same time, when we get back a confirmation that this was successful, we're going to start a different resource on node two. Um, we're going to start the cluster file system on, on the, the, all the nodes. And yeah, this, <laughs> there's a bunch of things happening uh, all at once. Hopefully you don't have to figure out, but uh, all, the, all the information that you need to figure out, okay, what, what actually went on is there. Um, so then we can see this is still like setting up. Uh, there's then a period of time where I was just sitting here looking at the, uh, the previous speaker. Uh, and then when I started messing around with things, we get new events, which is then resources basically moving between the, the nodes. Um, so if we go to uh, see which one am I at now? Yes, I'm at this one. Uh, you can see here, I, uh, yes, so what I did is I went in and I set node one to stand by and that then is triggering events to make sure that the resources that were running on node one aren't running anymore and anything that would need to restart on a different node is restarted there. So we have uh, the image server starting on node one, so that's going to have to move to node two. Um, and this is all basically um, decisions made by the cluster. So the cool thing is that you can actually simulate all of this. Um, so instead of having to use set node one to stand by and see what happens, you can get this kind of information beforehand um, to know uh, what's going what, uh, what's to be the... Uh, result of any changes that I make. And the way this works in Hawk is through the uh, batch mode, which is a new feature post uh, 2.0. So this is going to be in 2.1. Uh, so previously we had a simulator, which did that, but I've moved that into a unified way to make multiple configuration changes all in one batch and then see exactly what's, what the changes are going to be, what the effects of the changes is going to be, and then decide if you want to actually apply the changes or not. So the way we do that, we, see, we go into batch mode. Um, and then I can go in and say, OK, so uh, right now I have uh, the, node, uh, the node 2 migrated to uh, uh, node two, uh, the image server migrated to node 2. Uh, I can go in and uh, remove the migration. So uh, is, the unmigration thing is a little bit weird, but what it's doing is setting a constraint permanently saying that, okay, image server has to run on node two. Um, if, if you no longer want it to be forced to node two, but you want the cluster to manage it and say, okay, you can run anywhere, you have to go in and remove that constraint. Uh, so that doesn't mean it's gonna move back. Uh, that's a configuration issue. You can, you can configure it to prefer a certain node. So when there's no, no other constraints, it will always move back to node one if it's possible. Um, but in this case, it just, I need it to run. It can run anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so, but I can then go in and say, okay, but I don't want to move, I want to move it somewhere else. It's not here. I can do that. Uh, you can see now it's saying that it's running on node one, but since we're in the batch mode, Oh, everything I'm doing is just uh, simulated at this point. Uh, so you can see the, uh, the changes in the configuration, actually what I'm doing. So I've removed the constraint that says it has to run on node two and put in a constraint that says it can absolutely not run on node two. It can run anywhere else, but not on node two. And then I can go into the simulator and see exactly what that means. 
So here it's showing exactly the same view as in the history report where it was showing previous events that happened at some point in time. Uh, but it's actually showing a simulation of what it's going to do if I make the changes that I, that I was making. Uh, so in this case, you can see that the current state is that it, the image server is running on node 2. Uh, the decision it makes is that it needs to move the image server from node 2 to node 1. And that has the effect of forcing no image server to stop on node 2 and then to start on node 1 and then to start monitoring the resource on node 1. So that's kind of the, uh, the way that Hawk helps you to manage the uh, cluster software and then that makes it really easy to manage your, the software that you run in the cluster. Um, and yeah, this is all available on OpenSUSE um, today. So if you have a, a web server or something running on OpenSUSE and you want to have high availability for it, everything, all the pieces you need are already there, already the latest version and, and so on. Uh, so yeah, that's my demo. Uh, and I think yeah, I have four minutes for questions if anyone uh, has any. So I'm going to skip all the packaging details. Yeah, all right. Questions? Yes. What happens uh, if the node crashes that serves the Hawk? So Hawk is actually running on all of the nodes. So what I did was I went into one of the nodes, which is Hawk is provided on port 7630 on all cluster nodes. Uh, if that node crashes while I'm using it, I'm going to lose uh, my connection. I can then go to another node, or what I can do, which we usually do, is set up a virtual IP as a resource in the cluster, and then just connect to that, connect to Hawk on the virtual IP. Because if the node that I'm connecting to fails, the virtual IP will move to another node as a cluster resource, and I can continue to use Hawk there. So we'll just, you know, I just reload, I'm now on the other node, but I don't even know this because the clusters manage everything. So that's kind of how it works. Yeah, so that's kind of one of the special things about the, uh, the pacemaker and HA stack that we have is that there is no master node. There's no controlling node that you configure and that if that crashes, you can't access your cluster or uh, everything gets difficult. Every node is like an equal member. So the cluster itself would decide on one node that's the master right now, but it will automatically move to another node, and you don't have to connect to that node to configure anything. You can connect to any node, and the configuration is automatically moved, uh, done on all the nodes at once. So it's all transactional and, and clean that way. Yeah. All right. Okay, that's it then. Uh, any other questions that you have? I mean, this is all open source on GitHub as well, so it's all in in um, in OpenSUSE. So we we have the develop project there. Um, you can file issues on GitHub or via the SUSE bug bugzilla, uh, and we have mailing lists and um, uh, wikis and forums and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you have any questions. All right, thanks. All right.